I don't know what kind of joke you're playing. Wow. I'm gonna beat some sense into you, brat. And this is gonna happen. Let's go. Oh my God. Now he's scary. Come on, stop. Stop it. You have to stop. You. And then Char's boy. Oh, what the shade! Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna do episode four of Mobile Suit Gundam, the advent of the Red Comet, which is literally the origin TV shows. So anyway, to jump right back into it, when we last left off, we saw Eduardo and Sela, which is literally the new names of the Deku kids, as they try to hide away from the Zabi family, or at least get away from all the mess that's kind of happened back in their old home system. I don't know exactly what happened to the mom. Maybe she died? Mm too sure. We actually did see Jim Barra die. He was stabbed by a knight. Well, it really wasn't a knife. It was a bandit who hid into some knight armor, which was very smart, and like stabbed him. He was very, he was an interesting character. He definitely added a little spice to the show so far because he was very conspiracy theorist, but he was actually pretty right on all of his assumptions. Besides that, Sala and Eduardo, as well as their benefactor, is actually headed to the Texas colony to escape all this mess and actually to be closer to zombies so they can watch them, but not to be a threat. Now, back in our own colony, we did figure out that something's happening between zombies like they're creating something they're creating a different kind of mobile suit or a mobile worker now this mobile worker is able to withstand the attacks of a gun cannon full blast head-on multiple times actually and and is easily able to move fast one and two dispatch of gun cannons very easily with just a slash with his claws uh, it is one person operated two which is very beneficial than being a gun cannon you have to have multiple people in multiple places to do all that stuff you could just use one person i think it does have one weakness though like if you shoot the cabin you might kill the guy but besides that it looks pretty badass that's where we left off we did see a little cameo of amuro as well as his father and haro which is like some kind of green helper toy i think that's the name of it <laughs> i'm not exactly sure why in the other gundams it's like some kind of like high-tech factory machine working thing but anyways besides all that we're just gonna jump right into the next episode i can't wait to see what happens next thank you guys for watching please like comment subscribe and yeah let's just jump right in Beep -beep. oh the tower is all green like no one lives there whoa No. They Wait. They're doing well. They were adopted by a man named Teablo Moss on Earth. And... She's dying. That's quite all right, Crowley. I've heard everything I needed to know. Tell me, how's the club? You know, same as always. <laughs> it's been so long since I've been there. Has she just been there the whole time? That's how it happens. I don't regret a single moment. I would wish to be with my children. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's, this is hard. Don't die! Oh. No! Not the music! That cue! Oh, look at this beast running. Oh, it's a blue one now. Oh. There's no wires behind it, is it? You know how much money you need to do this to actively try to break it? Yeah. Shit, I thought you were gonna blow up right now. Look how I've fallen. I'm nothing more than the zombies hired dog. Mm -hmm. But you're doing this for Colonel Dozel. I was able to visit Lady Australia. Mm -hmm. I assume the Colonel pulled some strings. How is she holding up? Well, she asked me about how the bar was doing, but she it's just so unfair. Yeah. She's going to die soon. <laughs> We've been expecting you. I'm manager Roger Asma. Look at Lucifer, yeah, it's safe now. <laughs> what? That one looks like it's dying. <laughs> it's got again. You know, like, progressing fast. Your name wouldn't happen to be Sailor Moss, would it? My name's Char Osnable. You met my dad. He didn't mention me? 
What? That's funny, considering I'm the exact same age as your brother. He looks just like him. What? The only difference is their eye color. Oh, and the way you're holding the reins right now is wrong. You gotta loosen up and relax your shoulders. You try. I did not see this coming. Good, good, just like that. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna look at each other like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, like, what the hell? Hi, I'm Edouard Moss. Edouard Moss. And I'm Shar Osnival. Oh my god, what the hell is going on? I have so much to write about today. <laughs> Texas Colony is nothing like what it was on Moonzo. Mr. Osnival and his wife lived there. I got to meet Mr. Osnival's son. His name is Shar. Mr. Shar is the same age as Casball, and they look amazingly alike. <laughs> <laughs> Edouard? What just happened? Are you okay? It's nothing. She's dead. <laughs> I'm sorry to write you such sad news. Last night, your mother, Astraya, passed away. They haven't seen them since years, man. Damn. Can't even see her. That's insane. Look at his eyes. There's only one thing on his mind. Revenge. My meeting with the headmaster shouldn't take long. Why don't you two wait in Mr. Asnable's cafe? Mm hmm. You're not being straight with me. I'm just not sure if we're suited to provide for young Edouard. Several of our more problematic students have suddenly started performing better. And it's thanks to him. See, it's just, just what? Keeping him in check. The boy terrifies me. I have never come across one like Edouard. He has a keen mind, a cute sensitivity. Hmm. He's a special boy with many unique qualities. Why are you challenging this guy? He's hard like a steel knife. It's my concern that one day he will be the cause of some sort of catastrophe. <laughs> Enough! Say no more! Uh, you're done with the meeting already? I want that headmaster fired! <laughs> <sighs> I can't believe his nerve. He had no right to see the things he did. Oh, well, let's see. He knows. He knows something wrong with us, dude. Quit your stare at How long do you plan on following us? Hmm. He is scary, god damn. I don't know what kind of joke you're playing. Ah! 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 Wow. I'm gonna teach you a lesson, you punk! Dude, he's gonna make short work of you. Stop it now! Lord, he is scary. I'm gonna beat some sense into you, you brat! Ah! I knew this was gonna happen, let's go. Oh my god, now he's scary. Come on, stop! Stop it! You have to stop. You. You have to stop. Please stop it, Edouard! For if real. You don't, you'll kill that man! I just don't understand why you would do this! Besides, what good do you think it will do? And what do you think our mother would think if she saw you like this? I hate it! I hate it whenever you get like this! I'm sorry. Sorry, Artesia. Dude, this guy. <laughs> He's lying. He's gonna let this shit happen again. It's not in front of you. <laughs> but was that guy really following you, though? <laughs> Space noids are being robbed of their wealth, and Earth noids are then turning around and using that hard earned wealth to drive He doesn't Earth know to who he's talking in front of. For real! You see his eyes? say is true. I doubt we'll really go to war. But in 10 years, who can say? Never really know. So now he's thinking, hmm. Lucifer! Come on, baby, don't do this to me. Don't. Come on! Not two in one episode! <sighs> God damn it. Dude, she's losing a lot right now. Artesia. Look at him! I'm leaving so I won't see you for a while. I've decided to take you to Lucifer. Lucifer? 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 Yeah. Why does everybody have to leave me? Wow! Everyone's going away! Her mother is dead and now even Lucifer has left me! I beg you! Please, you can't leave me from there! I'm not gonna lie, think about it from her perspective. She's gonna be all alone. Wow. But that determination inside of him is too crazy. Look at that.
What? Would you care to explain what you're doing with this? I've never seen that thing before in my life. Why don't we discuss this in private? I'm going to miss Ooh. my flight. Tomorrow's my first day at Military Academy. The Zeon one. I can't miss the Academy's orientation. I can't. I have a solution. Sorry. We have to use the restroom, but we'll be right back. Here we go. The switch up. His companion's baggage set off a security target. Now nah, he's Chuck. Have you calmed down? Sorry for my outburst. Mr. Edwan Ma, please go to the gate. If you hurry, you can still catch your flight to Zion. Coming? I'll never forget this. Not ever. Not in a million years. <laughs> Bye. Caspell is heading to the gate by himself. Shall I proceed with the flag? Yes. With pleasure. That little friend of his has no idea how lucky he just got. Here it is. I wonder if he knew this. He probably knew they were going to kill him. He wanted to switch it up. What does this all mean? So he's still going to the academy or he's going to school? And then Char's boy. That must have been his old friend, but he doesn't know. Lino Fernandez. Uh, here. And also hailing from Lou. Char Osnable. Here. Yet another from Lou. And the 265 cadets from Sion, representing your class, is Garma Zabi. Here. Get all the spotlight. No, okay. That's uh, very uh, close to something else. Hey everyone, well that was the end of episode 4 of Mobile Suit Gundam, The Origin, The Advent of the Red Comet. Uh, I mean, we knew it was going to happen, but long story short, Edwa and Sala, their mother died. We figured out that she was getting old and like she was getting sickly. Now she was writing letters to the kids, but the kids never got the letters. As well as the kids was writing letters to her, and I'm not sure if she got the letters. She literally grew up in that tower and spent most of her life there. She didn't get to see the outside world. So by her sacrificing and having the kids go away, she knew that was the best option. So she did it as soon as she could before they could probably really lock down things. And it worked out in their favor. The kids are free to live um, as normal as they can. But, you know, she had to die there. She knew she was going to go to that tower to die. And that's exactly what happened. Um, we also did get to see Lucifer die as well. Now, I didn't catch it, but when they went to Texas, they were in this resort. And it was hosted by the Anzibal family. I didn't catch it because the way they were saying it, I didn't really ring a bell. So anyway, while Eduardo and Sailor were practicing horse riding, uh, Eduardo ran off and then Sailor was kind of needing help. And this, this striking young man came around that looks exactly like Eduardo. He came around with red eyes and uh, his name was Char, Char Anzibal. And long story short, they did meet up, Char and Eduardo. So they say, what's up? And uh, I kind of feel as though um, that, like, I didn't see that coming. Like, I didn't catch the name, the Anzibal name. And then when the kid came on, I was like, why does he look like Eduardo? And it's like, oh, they're going to do a switch. And that's exactly what happened. So long story short, Eduardo got accepted to a, a different school in Plume or something, like off this Texas colony school. So we had to take a flight there, as well as Char at the same time, finally got accepted to Xeon. So he's gonna join the military. So he's gonna fly there too. So long story short, they did like a little switcheroo at the last minute. I believe Eduardo planted a gun in Char's suitcase so they can have this time to do a switcheroo. I do not think, I do not think Eduardo planned on the real Char dying 
I just think that he was just gonna go and he's gonna mix up and then he's gonna go Zion and figure it out later. But it just happened to be that people were following him and once they got the shot, they just blew up a whole plane to kill Eduardo, which makes sense. You wanna kill the man, I guess, maybe because he might hair something. They left Sayla alone. I guess they just kept her under watch. So it's kind of crazy. The crazy thing is, even though the mom died in the tower, the kids were kind of supposed to die in Texas or like, they don't really, can't really travel anywhere uh, without being watched heavily. And Eduardo knew that. And like, that's probably why he's always on the edge because everything he does, there's someone watching somewhere. That's not a really good life to live. Even though they were kind of free and stuff like that, like they can't really go there without being watched. And I guess it was just so they can get killed and murdered. And that's exactly what happened. So they, they finally killed off Eduardo. And I wonder, I don't think it happened in this, it didn't happen in this episode, but next episode, I believe Sayla's gonna really think she lost her brother. You gotta think about that. She lost her mom, she lost her cat of some years, and she lost her brother. One, his brother went away, but now he's believed to be dead. She went through all that trauma. So you think about it, she is all alone. And I bet because of that, they might not try to kill her. They might watch her for a little bit, but they're not really gonna try to kill her. Wow, that's crazy. Which makes the reveal in 0079 a little bit more uh, dramatic because um, I seen it, uh, the first movie, I didn't see the episodes, I should see the episodes, but yeah. Like, hey, that's my brother. It's like, where the fuck does brother thing come from? But now you see why, like, she's like, her brother's dead. Oh man, this is crazy, but it makes a lot of sense. That's one way to get them to break apart. But you know what's crazy is because what's interesting is because when they were in that ceremony to induct the new, new class of the Xeon military, um, I guess one of Char's old friends was talking to Char like he knew him. And then Eduardo Mas or whatever, he was all like, uh, yeah, why are you talking to me so much? <laughs> Like, I don't really know you. He's like, Char, you're acting so weird. And he's like, oh, well, you know, we mature sometimes. So this is, I bet she's gonna be like, Eduardo was like some kind of like one way, but now he's gonna break off and be this totally dramatic, cold killer guy now. I just can't wait to see what happens. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this episode. It was kind of dramatic. It was a lot of dramatic, a lot of death in this episode. Just people just fading away and things change. A lot of dying and reforming. But yeah, this was a really good episode. I really love the character designs. The mother being sick really got to me. It was only the first couple episodes, first couple of minutes in the episode too. But it was really deep and powerful. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I can't wait to see what happens next. And yeah, um, see you Peace.